All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego on the west coast of the United States. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Amit Prakash, who is over in one of my favorite places, Singapore. How are you doing, Amit? Very well, John. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Of course, of course. And Ahmed is an international business trainer, speaker, and consultant with over 16 years of action-packed and quality experience and works for the organization who he is a founder and lead trainer and consultant, Motivus. And what we're going to talk today is a very interesting concept that you have come up with, uh, Ahmed, called Sales Wish. So do you, want to, do you want to just explain that to the audience first, and then we'll get into it? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so before I get started with the main topic, I think it's important to give a bit of my background, which is uh, I've studied service and I've studied sales and marketing. So I've, I've done my hospitality um, course and then I did my MBA in marketing. And after that, I've worked throughout in sales from the very beginner's role up to the corporate rank in multiple service brands across different countries and continents. And while working in sales in service industry, uh, and also when, when you're in sales in service industry, you get to interact as a customer with almost every other industry companies. And uh, that's where you get to know them a lot more closer. So one thing that I felt that uh, was missing in the market that we have great sales uh, speakers, trainers, professionals in the market, and we have great customer service speakers, trainers, and professionals in the market. But what was missing was the integration of these two very important departments and teams where if it is not aligned, if it is not integrated, the gap created between the two teams operations leads to a poor customer experience. And that is detrimental for the success of any organization. And that's where I've, I've always felt that just a sales mindset or being great with sales skills or just with service mindset or just being great with service skills is not enough. That's good, that's the foundation, which is very important. But until you, these two departments don't work very, very, very closely together in an integrated way, it will not result into the right positive customer experience. Yeah. And for any, for any business, it, what is more important is the customer is happy, the customer is getting a memorable experience so that the customer repeats and also becomes an unpaid brand ambassador bringing more new customers to you. And that's how a business becomes sustainable. But we have been failing to realize this fact. And we've been, companies have been investing millions of dollars every year on training their sales teams individually and their service teams individually. But what I feel is that these two crit critical teams who should be integrated, should be since the beginning be trained by the same trainer so that since the beginning, they are upgrading their mindset from sales mindset and customer service mindset to customer experience mindset. Yeah, Because that's what is ultimately important for any business and even for sales professionals. Let's say we, we take an example of sales professional. If they have sales mindset and they've brought in one-time sale, but if the service team is not integrated with them and if they're not providing the right promised service, then of course the customer is not going to be happy and the sales teams will need to bring in new customers every time, which is very tiring, which is not right. And it's like every time you are running after new business rather than just building relationship and bringing in repeat business and, and expanding your market share from your existing companies. And at the same time, when you have every time a new customer coming in, the customer service teams don't have the right data and knowledge points in terms of right. creating memorable experience for them. So for them also, it's, it's like every time they're trying to understand um, a new customer, 
but if they're not repeating because the brand mm -hmm. promise which is made by the brand and brought to life by the sales team is not really met by the service team. Yeah, so and, I, and I think just just on on that, Amal, I just wanted to say is I think as people still today don't always understand the concept of customer experience and how it's an end to end experience. It's not a pre sales experience. It's not a sales experience. It's not an after sales experience. It's all of them combined, and if one part of that falls down human beings being what they are, they tend to default to the one negative experience. So that's why what you're saying is critically important to bring Absolutely. all of these groups together. Yes, part on John. Uh, and that's the reason what I've done is over these years, I've created a framework for the customer experience, which starts from pre-sales where the brand and marketing team come in and then sales, customer service. And finally it uh, completes with uh, the customer feedback management, which is also very important. And uh, I don't know if, if I have enough time to explain the model that I've created around <laughs> customer Yeah, experience. yeah, no, please, please do. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so, so in my uh, corporate experience of having been there, done that, uh, both sales and customer service, uh, and being in business myself, uh, I've realized that companies start primarily with two, either of the two broad reasons. Number one could be that there is a need in the market mm -hmm. and there is a supply and demand mismatch. And that's how someone wants to capitalize on it and make money, but also they want to put forward a promise to their customers. So that is one reason. The second reason is that someone is very passionate about certain area uh, and they want to really make a positive difference. And that's where they get into the business and start like we, uh, means I was in, in corporations and I was on expat roles, traveling across mm, different right. countries, the continent, staying in, in hotels, uh, had a very cozy life, but I started my own company because I felt that I can really bridge this gap between sales and service, which I've been seeing consistently lacking almost in every company and every industry. So, so that is the second broad reason for a company to start. And they also have to make some brand promise. So what happens that now there's certain brand promise that are put down. It could be one, it could be five. Then the brand team basically lays down the promise and the marketing team puts it into the right shape and brings it in front of the prospects. So that's where the pre-sales activity is happening. And now when a customer gets really attracted towards this marketing activity and the promise that is made by the brand, then they say, okay, uh, it resonates with me and it meets my need. Let me go and try them out. And that's where the sales teams come into the picture where they bring the promise to life make a sale and reiterate that the same promise will be lived across their different customer experience touch points. And that's when the customer buys it and then moves on to the next uh, stage in, in their customer experience touch point. And that's where they meet with the, with the customer service team. Different companies have different names, mm -hmm. customer service, customer yeah. success, customer support. It could be operations, it could be delivery, but ultimately they're all there to serve the customer and live the brand promise yeah. and that's and, where... and and it's and it's and, and wouldn't you agree Ahmed it's incredibly and it's incredibly important that those handoffs are seamless that they're very elegant because the thing that people hate the most let's be honest is when you get dumped from sales to service and there's no elegant handoff and you're kind of feel exactly. a bit lost exactly yeah this is absolutely what is happening so a promise is made at this level, which is as per the brand promise, but when it comes to the actual delivery, because of the lack of integration, lack of coordination and, and lack of uh, um, collaboration between the two teams, the experience falls down because um, service teams tend to follow certain standard procedure, which is important. But mm -hmm. at times what happens is that sales teams have to, because of competition or for certain reason, they have to oversell or overcome it. And that's the reason a handover between these two departments is super critical 
to ensure that whatever has been promised to the customer has been lived by the yeah. by the operations by the customer service team and that's where i come in and i do train both the teams individually first in their individual skill sets because i've studied that and i've worked in in that space and then i shift their mindset from sales mindset and service mindset to one uniform mindset called customer experience mindset and and that's how the customer gets the same level of experience and meets the brand promise that uh, a company puts forward and even after doing all these efforts then the last stage comes where it's called customer feedback management mm -hmm. where proactively there is not just one department responsible for it it is in in my model it is comprising of the pre sales which is brand and marketing team right. sales customer service and a sample of management team or the leadership team so that nothing is hidden everything is crystal clear it's it's known to everyone and the system that i've created ensures that a proactive feedback during the whole experience and immediately after the whole experience is collected mm -hmm. if the feedback is good then the the, the framework ensures that uh, the team members are appreciated and recognized uh, for for doing that and if there is anything that customer feels has not been met based on the brand promise then an immediate uh, investigation is done where we lack what happened and then we find out the right reasons because here there won't be anything hiding because yeah. it's comprising of different uh, department people and then the customer is reached out again and we inform them that okay this is the reason that we failed this is what we have done and please give us another chance where we will ensure that you don't have any slippage from the promise to uh, the delivery at any stage and uh, that's how the whole cycle keeps getting upgraded in terms of the brand promise and and the service delivery as well yeah so, and, one, and one of the things Ahmed, is that oftentimes i think this is another thing that frustrates customers something that you've just uh, touched upon there is it's not just gathering the feedback it's actually making it actionable and making sure that the customers can see that you're actually taking the feedback and doing something with it absolutely this is very very important and it's important to collect feedback during their journey also and yeah. to set up a process and also immediately once they finish their journey and if there is anything wrong go back to them do service recovery and and put forward your next promise that this is what we have done this is what this is how we are going to serve you and give us another chance and that's where even customers understand that it could be because of a human error it could be because yeah. two departments are are not very well uh, aligned so they understand until we don't just go back to them and put forward our revised uh, our our upgraded promise so they can understand always and give us another chance and we ensure that we are extra careful in delivering our promise and that's when they become another so i call them as unpaid brand ambassador <laughs> many companies have got paid brand ambassadors they spend millions of dollars every year on that but i think the customers when they are converted into the unpaid brand ambassadors you don't have to pay anything you just have to live your brand promise and ensure that everything goes smooth across each of their customer touch points yeah. and, and, and to uh, be honest and to be honest if some organizations put as much effort into just living the brand promise they wouldn't need to be paying these brand ambassadors because they as you said they would have free ones absolutely john you're right spot on there yeah so as you as you work with organizations now do you feel that people are waking up to this uh, that they realize that this needs to happen because uh, let's face it before the pandemic you know, digital transformation, integration, customer experience, all great buzzwords. Some people were doing it. A lot of people were paying lip service to it. But then the pandemic showed that you can't, that you need to have good digital processes. You need to have good processes across the organization. And you need to start to integrate the departments more and have them work in a more matrix fashion. Do you think organizations are ready for that now? Uh, organizations are getting more and more ready for sure because 
systems and processes are very important, not, not just to serve, but also to collect the right feedback and ensure that the customer's voice is heard and it's put, put it is upgraded, it is updated in the system, in the CRM systems. And every time that customer repeats, you serve them in the way that they want you to serve. So that's how, um, yeah, it, 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 it was a slow movement before the pandemic, but I think during the pandemic, it's kind of caught up a lot more. And uh, this, these are the tools that are going to help us as professionals in sales and service and leadership teams. And we should definitely embrace this. Yeah, I, I, I would totally agree. I, would, I totally agree. And I think, and I think then it also means that obviously sales and marketing and customer service, that they all have to work together. But it also means that at a leadership level in the company, they they need to, it needs to come from the top that this collaboration has to happen and the customer experience has to be an end-to-end, uh, an end-to-end process or ex- and something that belongs to everybody. So, I mean, and you've probably experienced this, you can't do this without full buy-in from leadership. Absolutely. This is absolutely a top-down effort because until they understand the importance of this, it will never be implemented uh, down the line, which is uh, absolutely not going to be successful if it is not starting at the, at the leadership level. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And what are some of the other obstacles that you see to, to implementing, implementing this initiative in, in an organization? So initially, uh, when I used to talk about uh, this initiative uh, without, uh, just just verbally, mm-hmm. uh, they used to understand, but they were not getting the fire coming in their belly. Uh, but then, when when I created a keynote, especially for for this topic on sales, this the new recipe for business success, and I started to present, I started to gift this uh, keynote to the leadership team, and the leadership team here primarily included the head of sales, head of customer service, head of human resources, head of learning and development. And anyone above them could be MD, CEO, chairman of the company, depending on the size of the company. When I started to to present and and gift that keynote, which I have, then they started to realize the importance of it. Because uh, as per New Voice Media report, uh, businesses are losing more than $75 billion a year because of poor customer experience. And the integration between these two critical departments is the major reason for for creating the poor experience because brand and marketing is doing their work, which has been defined. Mm -hmm. They're just repeating the same thing, but each and every sales and each and every service is new. And it has to be done by the sales and service teams. And that's where the major hiccup happens. And that's where even the CRM comes into the picture where you can capture the right uh, priorities of the customers, right likes and dislikes of the customers, and that helps you. It becomes a great tool because you are intending to bring that customer time and time again and capturing their preferences, capturing their likes and dislikes, it's, it's very important. And that's where even CRM system is, is becoming more and more critical these days. Yeah, no, absolutely. And especially uh, when you have all the, when you have integrate your other systems and therefore you can see, you know, what tickets, customer support tickets they've had, all of these things. If you have a central repository and you have a, a composite picture of your customer, then you you can engage with them in a more informed fashion, anybody who, who wants to. Um, and, and a final, final question, uh, Ahmed, um, what do you see for the future now? What do you see? I mean, I think this is going to be very disruptive to organizations going forward. I don't think they realize yet. I think it, it started off by, you know, we need these groups to interact and collaborate. What do you see beyond that? I mean, it's, we're still talking about very traditional kind of organization structures. We're just talking about them maybe working together a little bit more. What do you see? Because I know you see something probably a little bit more dramatic down the, down the road. Yeah, so I think uh, it's going to take uh, some time for sure. But my long term vision is to see companies integrating these two departments so well together that they can be called sales with rather than sales and service. And the seven step process that I've created 
uh, to ensure that this whole integration happens for good and for eternity. Um, that includes the step-by-step -step process of what you follow, and then you will be able to achieve them. And uh, of course, uh, the anchor in this whole process is also the right CRM system. And um, my long-term vision is that these two departments are so well integrated that if there is a need to switch team members between these two departments, it's very, and, and the whole seven-step process actually ensures you to achieve that. Let's say, for example, uh, I, I keep giving this example. Give me a few seconds. Sure. Uh, let's say there is, there is a sales professional. She is a lady. She is a brilliant sales professional. And uh, she's been the best sales professional in the company for the last couple of years. And she decides to go family way and she has a baby and the doctor advises that, okay, there have been some complications and you need to be on a easy going job for the next one year. You cannot be running out in the market or having a stressful job for the next one year. That could be really bad for your health and your future. In that case, and this has happened with my team mm -hmm. when I was a sales leader myself. In that case, uh, either this sales lady who is great in, in sales, she quits knowing that the company will not support or the company lets her go because uh, then she becomes uh, of no use to the company. But I want to create a system where there is a buddy system, there is a cross exposure, there is an integration between these two departments. So she comes back and talks to one of the leaders from sales or service, and they ensure that she is moved into the service role, which is back at the, uh, at, at, at the office, which is the customer is also aware that, okay, she is not out of the company, she is within the company. So the promises that she has made is going to be lived. And the customer also knows the buddy from the service team because right. Every, every, at every point in time, the customer knows at least three people, mm -hmm. the salesperson, the service person, and, and the leadership team. So the customer is also very comfortable in ensuring that, yes, my whole promise, my whole package, my whole pricing is intact, and this guy is going to be helping me. And after one year, they can choose to switch back to their roles. And this, in this way, we can retain both the talent within the company rather than losing them. So that's my really long-term vision that uh, these two departments become so, so, so importantly collaborated that because I feel my, in my whole sales career, when I look back, I felt that I've never sold. I've always right. served and the sales happened mm -hmm. and sales happened at higher price, longer contracts and, and bigger volumes. And at the same time, when it comes to service, I feel since we are in a service of business, not yeah. in the social service, our solutions could be solving customers' problems. And we should not be shying away to put forward our solutions at, at a certain price, which could be an upselling, cross-selling, or downselling to come to customers, but it comes across as a great solution to them. So mm -hmm. I, I believe everyone sells, everyone serves, whether they are in sales, service, leadership, or whichever department you call, everyone is a brand ambassador of the business. Everyone sells, everyone serves. So yeah. the integration is highly possible. It's just that we have right now a fixed mindset where we think, okay, a salesperson can only sell, a service yeah. person can only serve. Which yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think we have to totally change our our, our mindsets around this. Um, listen, Amit, this has been great. And all of Amit's information is going to be below this video. But before we end, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and Motivus. Yeah, so Motivus has uh, been headquartered in Singapore, but we serve worldwide. And that's that's the main mission that uh, I and my team members have. Uh, we have representations and offices in different countries. Um, we have it in, in Middle East, uh, which is Dubai. We have it in Australia, Singapore, India, um, with teams in, in these locations. But the mission is one, which is to upskill the sales and service teams and integrate them so well together that the customer experience is absolutely uniform. And uh, we are on this mission for uh, last four years already, and we are going strong. We've been helping 
one company at a time and they're getting good results. And the moment I gift my uh, sales with keynote, leadership teams really start to understand how important it is. And so what is the problem? Why is it important to be solved and how it can be solved? So if they have uh, team strength to implement, they can just take this as a gift from us and implement on their own. If they feel that they need handholding and help, we are always. <laughs>